I'm so crazy. Hey y'all, we matching. Yes, yes. We're together. Yeah, we're together. Like, we really are together. together in the yeah. same place. This is not a cut and paste video. We are together. It is Thanksgiving weekend. We are all excited. Let's be clear, okay? She came in, she was looking a little extra cute, so I changed the extra cute, but do not let these colors fool you. I am orange and blue. <laughs> Breaded, okay. Uh, this is no this is no garnet, okay, and gold. <laughs> um I feel a little deceived now that I just went live. But anyway, it's okay, it's okay. Um welcome. We know you have missed us. We have been away, like I said, a couple of weeks. I was sick, tried both of us was traveling, and then I did the mindset Monday. So we are back. We are back yes. and ready. Yes with part three of influence yes. influence for so someone that is following or maybe you just happen to land on this and you thought my set monday was gonna be today nope um but it is coming back but so it's help me is gonna be here so here's the deal go back to video one and you will kind of learn about help me um we don't want to beat all of that again but the bottom line is god brought us together uh, this is my big sis, Celeste Bolden. I am Latrice Bartley. We are your co-hosts for this Help Me. And we are just here to encourage wives. We yeah. are here to bring a safe space for you. We have struggled in silence. We have um, honestly had some ups and downs in our marriage. Uh, we know what it's like uh, to deal with it silently, to not open up. And we also recognize that that was a whole attack from the enemy. And so what we want to do through these episodes and through these series is reach wives, reach women and encourage you that you don't have to do it alone. We get it, but there's a way that yeah. we're going to do it. Yeah. And so we always like to say from the offset, you know, listen, anyone is welcome, but we are here to give a biblical perspective. Yeah. On and, marriage, mm -hmm. on everything. Right. And we just also want to let you know, like we always say, you know, it's not that we've reached perfection mm -mm. and we're all things married that we're not. Perf perfect marriage, we're not. But mm -hmm. what we are, what we can tell you is that we have a heart for God and we want to do it his way. Right? Committed. Um, yeah. And we, and we want to do things his way because yeah. his way is the best way. You mm -hmm. know, and when you rely on him to lead you, lead us as wives, you know, and as women, um, we'll find that things will work out so much better. Mm -hmm. um, if you happen to see children. Oh, I was top, just about to say that. We are just, here life. And yeah, just ignore them because they just they ignore playing. them because we, we are also <laughs> mothers. Now hers is out of the house, but I got three I got and she got there. her niece up there. <laughs> And so we are baiting them with all toys to keep quiet. So y'all going to see them hanging off beds, just running down. Yeah, just ignore them. It's just, it is what it is, you know. So, yeah, so welcome. We would love for you to scroll back through. But today, today, we are going into Influence Part 3 and hopefully wrapping up this segment. But this is so powerful. Um, last week, just, uh, and I keep saying last week, y'all know I mean, two weeks, uh, like we're trying to get just a recap. We talked about influence is so powerful. And the definition that we gave is the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something. So think about that influence we said remember normally when you think influence the next word you hear is impact yeah. you know so to impact the character development or behavior of someone and so of course this topic was so important because a lot of times as we mentioned we want to jump into the wife aspect right you know becoming this wife and we want to in some ways influence but a lot of times we have to kind of go back and leave our husbands alone for just a minute <laughs> And deal with us, yes. you know, deal with the woman right. that we are, because it's easy to look out onto them and saying, well, if you da da da, and if you, but no, it starts here. It starts and this is the work that we had to do. <laughs> and we keep sharing that we're not here to look down on anyone or try to tell you you're wrong. You should be doing this. We're giving everything we talk about. We, <laughs> we have been through. Yes. We have chosen to die to ourselves. We have chosen to take, as Celeste say, the way that God has given us through the biblical, through the Bible. Yes. And so that's our definition. 
simply put, influence is powerful. Um, as I already mentioned, we think about it for impact. We talked about influencers, you know, even as we opened up, we see that, I mean, social media is saturated and not all bad, right? right. I mean, I look at some for their houses. It gives me ideas. You have people that influence your decorator. You have people that influence how you cook your food. Yep. People, so we see influences all over. So our question to you was when someone mentions your name, what will be that influence? What will be that impact when someone say, do you know Latrice? Do you know Celeste? Do you know Tia? Do you know you put your name? What are gonna be the first words? Are they gonna be like, mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about that mean lady? <laughs> right. That girl with the wanna be lying all the time? All the time. Lying all yeah. the time. You know, yeah. what will be not what you want, those that really know you. Because our influence impacts more than what we think. Right. And so, of course, our perfect example is none other than Jesus himself. Yes. Um, we mentioned through the last episodes, and we're not going to go over all of them, but everywhere he went, he influenced, he was powerful, he transformed lives, he transformed bodies, he healed, um, he touched the untouchable, regulated minds. So at the end of the day, Jesus' influence, though, not only did it change atmosphere, shift atmospheres, change minds, but it made people uncomfortable. And we want to talk about that because being influential, though we all want this great impact, whether it's over our children, our husbands, and our home, it's going to be require being uncomfortable. So that's a little bit of um, the past couple episodes. The main thing that we want as we get ready to go into this new segment is reminding you that Jesus's influence brought a call to action. Every, even when someone was approaching, he was, what do you want? Rise up, yeah. <laughs> you know, go be, take up your bed. He required something. It was a call mm -hmm. to action. And so we want to remind you through all these episodes, we have a will, we have a choice. How are you going to act? Right. And so today we're digging a little bit um, deeper and Celeste is going to lead out in this one of, you know, some influence that we don't want to be a part of, right. which is very important because we need to have a great outlook on it all. Right, 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 right. So, so, and so remember earlier she said, which, you know, I think we've probably said in every episode that Jesus Christ is our perfect example, right? And we're, we're going to come from the Bible, you know, we're going to have some practical examples. Actually, today we're going to have some practical mm -hmm. examples for you, but our foundation is in the Bible and Jesus is our perfect example, right? And so at the end of John, when Jesus, he had to go away, he had to ascend to the father sitting on the right hand. And so, um, but he sent back the comforter, right? He sent back mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. So guess what, ladies? We don't have to do this by ourselves. Mm -hmm. and we, we say that all the time. We don't have to do this by ourselves. And so the Holy Spirit is our influence, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's our helper, right? Um, and so my question to you is, um, is the Holy Spirit your influencer? Who is your, who is your influencer? Who is your influencer, right? Because mm -hmm. if you say that, if you profess Christ, if you say that you are a godly woman, if that's who you want to be, then the Holy Spirit should be yeah. your greatest influence. And guess what? If he's not, then there's some other spirit that's in that spot, right? And that's what we're going to talk about today. There's some other spirit in that spot. So as I begin to really think about this, um, and we talk about things all the time, we always call it, girl, guess what happened, girl, if he don't blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we always have oh, these conversations, right? Uh, but I think about what 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 make, what that made me think about was in our homes, right? So that nurturing side of God, He gave that to us, right? Yeah. He gave the, that yeah, to the women, yeah, He yeah. gave that to the wives, right? And so, really, if you think about it, we set the tone in our homes, right? Mm -hmm. Even though our husbands are a priest, yeah. um, but we set the tone. So, what do I mean by that? You check out the temperature when you're mad in the house, right? Mm. Check out the temperature when you're sad, you know, check out what happens, check out the atmosphere when, you know, you're just, you just aren't feeling it when your mood is one way or the other, maybe for a good reason or maybe for a not so good reason. Mm -hmm. the, the point of it is, is that, you know, we're the ones who set the tone in our homes and then God made us, God made it to be so, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to be very, very careful 
with how we manage that. Yeah. And so when I talk about, you know, when I talk about the Holy Spirit being our helper and being our guide, you know, um, when those people that are closest to us, our husbands and our and our children, when mm -hmm. we go off left because we mad because somebody didn't pick up their socks of, you know, whatever it is, like, how are we sending those people out of our homes? Right. Like, we have to be very mindful yeah. of that because that's influence. That's influence. So you have, and she can talk about this, you have small kids, right? Mm -hmm. And um, your small kid made you mad right before y'all got ready right to walk before. out the door. Mm -hmm. And you say something like, you getting on my nerves. And they're going to school with that. Yeah. Right? Or you and your husband just had a little bit of a riff. And he's getting ready to leave the house. And y'all just had a riff. And you say something like, boy, you better go and get out this house. Because cause I know one thing. I'm getting ready. All of that. Influence. That's influence. Because here's the thing. And impact. Because <laughs> he's leaving the house with this. Yeah. Right? And he's going into the workplace. He's going into wherever it is that he's going. And baby, the devil is waiting. The devil in a nice skirt with hips yeah. and all waiting right to soothe whatever that is now i'm not saying that after the one squabble right mm -hmm. but is that a habit like right. does that and happen? wisdom yeah yeah wisdom you gotta be with you gotta be, be wise. wise that's that's real it's real but we want to use be able to recognize the enemy and i think what's key to what you said is who is your influencer mm -hmm. because who your influencer is is who you follow yeah and if you are following the holy spirit he nudges you like not now not now don't do that now and i could give you an example because i'm married to a pastor as most of you know and i've said it before and there were times where i didn't care like if we got into a rift before church sometimes i didn't care if it was before church like you getting ready to hear what i because i'm mad so you get ready to hear what i'm getting ready to say mm -hmm. but i had to as i begin to allow the lord because remember he is always when you are ready to get your home in order so that your atmosphere won't be you know void of peace Mm -hmm. he's always going to start with you first always <laughs> always and so when he when i really begin to submit and allow him to influence how i even dealt with my yeah. husband pastor chris um he would say i would i would be thinking something or something would happen and the holy spirit would say not 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 right now this would be like on a sunday morning you know or Okay, I take a long time to get dressed. That, that's just that's just the truth. I, I really do, right? I, I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> I just take a long time. Okay, I try to go fast, but it don't always work that way. So, <laughs> Pastor Chris be like, okay, you ready to go? And I just be like, well, you can really drive your own car. I mean, come on. Like, you know, like, but host me be like, shut it down. Because right. you're getting ready to create something. He got to go preach. He got to go yeah. be before the people. You know what I mean? So, and that wasn't always easy, but when you develop a habit mm -hmm. of pausing and listening to who's influencing you, then that's how you're going to respond, right? And we just have to be mindful that there is a real enemy in some of the, listen, smallest things. In yeah. some of the smallest things. Mm -hmm. I love that my mom taught me growing up. She's always say, if you can name your enemy. In other words, if I'm upset with Celeste and I can name it, she's like, you lost the spirit realm. You've left the spirit realm. You're in carnal because there's only one enemy. And it's not my sister. It's not my brother. You know, though there may be some act, them, some things, characteristic things that are going on. Here's the, the thing. we The reason I say that is we have to know that he's always working subtly. He's not the, the devil with the big pick right. for coming right. to say that's no he's subtle and right. when you thought when you gave that example as as you said as a parent i'm big about i'm always teaching my kids real life i want them to know real life i'm preparing them for life so i'm teaching them you know what it means to prepare and to plan and to all the things that my oldest is me which is probably why sometimes we just you you you, you. but not organized like me and i think about a time he he had a volunteer event and he but he's very like heart like me he's mm -hmm. emotional you mm -hmm. know he's very heart he loves heart 
And so I was just so upset because he knew all the things we had discussed that he didn't do the follow through. And I'm just in the car, like Celeste said, just going over. You got to do da 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 da. And you, I don't know what you be thinking about. How would you do that? I'm just going. And when I tell you by the time I finished my last sentence, and I had some more I could think about, I just have to look in the rearview mirror. And with each fussing, you can almost see like that balloon you pop, and it's just zoo, zoo, zoo. Mm -hmm. And I could it's see lady. like all over his face. It was like, I'm nothing. That thing, and the Lord said, stop. You're right, but now do you think, how does he, this is an opportunity for him to take the gift I entrusted him in to be such a blessing to some other kids and he can't and I felt so bad and so I had to take the high road to say mm -mm. and it wasn't that what I said was wrong but it wasn't the timing it right. wasn't the the place like t she said that temperature you know what is it to be right but wrong you right but then he can't Time even make the well. impact yeah. and so I began to say you know hey like I said, this is what I'm trying to say, da da da, da. And I had to switch it. You are great. You're doing this, da, da da I had to build him up in that moment. And I think he was a little shocked, but I began to, and I could see it picking him up because what I did want to do is send him into a volunteer event, deflated. He walking in and people, they excited to see him. It's like, come on, good afternoon. You know, it's like, well, because that could also ruin an opportunity for him. Yeah. So we really do have to be mindful as Celeste said, the atmospheres that we create. Yeah. We create. Right. And and you know what's so good about what you said is the fact that when you started to build him back up, right? Because remember, we said we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. We don't have a down pat. And sometimes we, we have those moments where we do, where we're not really listening at first, mm -hmm. right? But then when you do listen, that is a that is another type of influence and impact yeah. we have on our kids to let them to let them see that you know what mommy messed up at this particular moment yeah. but mommy also came back asked you for forgiveness or said i'm sorry you know yeah. this wasn't the time or whatever and then you you know began to correct that behavior because we are not perfect but we just want to be we want to be like christ right so mm -hmm. And we want our kids and we want whoever it is that we're influencing at the time and see that, right? Because you may go off the rails in the moment. Right, right. But there's nothing that says that you can't come back. But see, that's where we talk about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that you have to be in tune, you know, with him so that when he does say stop, like he, like he did with her in the moment, that she stopped. Because sometimes we, I don't know about you, but I've gotten so mad sometimes and you can override. You can override that stop and don't say that and don't do that. And be done greed, though. Yeah, like greed yep. him. Yep. And so you just going off into your own thing. And then you still have to come. Hey, listen, you still have to come back and apologize. Still. You still got to come back and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Then you still got to do that building and that rebuilding because you torn something down. Right. So you And you have to be, and that's okay. You have to be humble. You have to humble yourself. Yeah. To do what's necessary. To do what's necessary. Yeah. Especially when it comes to your kids. Yes, right? Yes. You have to humble yourself and let them see that. So, listen, I have a couple questions for you, right? Um, because we were talking about the type of influencer that you want to be and who you want to be. You know, that's one of our questions. Who do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Right? So, here are, here are a couple of questions for you. And I'm going to ask from a husband's standpoint, but we're also going to talk about, you know, workplace and that kind of thing. But I'm going to ask you, you know, when you feel like your husband isn't responding to you in a way that you think he should, like, what do you do? You know, what 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 kind of things do you do? What kind of uh, tactics do you pull out your bag? You know, what do, what do you do? Um, even and not even with your husband, but with your kids. Yes, they're young or whatever. But what do you even do with them to try to get them to do what you want them to do? Right. What's your motive? Do you consult the Holy Spirit, who, as I said, is your helper, and he can do much more than we ever could? Um, or do you result, as I said, to tactics, or the word that we're going to focus on today is called manipulation, right? I need my cup, like the green frog. Like, <laughs> not right. Just turn your head. Uh -huh. <laughs> like what? Like what? Well, what, what do you do? Do you manipulate? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about manipulation today, sis, because... Mm. That's, that's that's it's not a good thing. Manipulation always has a negative negative connotation yes. to it. 
Yes. And so let's explore that. Let's explore that. We want to talk about the definition of manipulation. Yes. Real quick. So one of the definitions of manipulation is controlling someone or something to your own advantage, often unfairly or dishonestly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another definition is the action of influencing or controlling someone or something to take your advantage often without anyone knowing it mm -hmm. and so listen we just gonna go all in because here's the thing that we say from the offset where and celeste said it beautifully in the beginning we we 25 years this was 19 years for me so we have some experience in the game we're not perfect what we try to do is authentically share what we've been through in hopes of say, helping someone say sis don't go that route we've yeah. been there done that or whether someone's single watching, letting you know what not to do or what didn't work. It don't what even mean work, yeah. what, what didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things when we were sharing this example, I was sharing with Celeste how I remember um, earlier in my marriage just trying to figure out that communication thing. And already let's be honest you know i am a very strong-willed woman okay <laughs> very strong-willed and opinionated definitely in this season of my life okay <laughs> and so it's I'm like, like too, though, so. <laughs> i had to remember and i wrote about this in my in the book that we did together i had the lord had to remind me you're on the same team because everything was like me against him. Like it's a, a, a case to win, right? And so I love this definition because I remember we had a mutual friend that when things would go down and maybe I didn't like the decision he was making or he I didn't feel like he was hearing me, I would call the mutual friend to say, you know, just kind of to vent. I knew it was somebody that we both agreed, we, we trusted. But the reality is my heart wasn't right. It was another avenue to kind of, I could say, be like, and, and this is what, this is impacting me. And, that, and maybe if you talk to them, he'll get the understanding from a guy's point of view. Mm -hmm. But it really is like, I need you to get him to see how I want to do it. And having the mutual person was not a problem because we both had agreed. It wasn't like we were exposing all of our marriage, but it was the heart. The motive was wrong. It was manipulative. And it basically came down to the second part of this definition, which says the action of influence or control. It was control someone or something to take your advantage. You know, and I had to learn. It's so easy to do those Matthew 16, 33, you know, that we love to quote, seek ye mm -hmm. first the kingdom of God. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, in all thy ways, all is the key word in here, acknowledge God. But when we run to resources and acts that are compromising the integrity, not only of our lives, but the word of God and to control someone, even your children. Let's be clear. I had to learn that with my first child, I remember, because if I be very honest with that, I didn't know, right? And so I remember saying, if you... Da, 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 da. If you da, 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 I would, we would have these arguments, and I kid you not, this is why we say the Holy Spirit is so important. We make a lot of mistakes, but thank God for the Holy Spirit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit one day in prayer said to me, Do you want your children to obey you out of fear? And I went, What? I don't, what, I don't understand that question. He said, Do you want them to? And I'm like, Well, no. He said, What you're doing is placing fear over their head to get an action. They're, they're scared, so they're going to do things. Or do you want them to obey because you teach them through the word, through actions, through, you know. And I said, oh, my God. And so I had to recognize that even raising your children out of fear is manipulative. It's mm -hmm. controlling mm -hmm. the behavior to mm -hmm. get what you want. But yeah. that's not how you want a parent. No. You don't want them obeying you out of fear. You want them to have a fear and reverence of God. But not, you know, oh, my mama, okay, so I'm going to do this. Because then here's what happens. When they get 18 and you ain't nobody, <laughs> they ain't got no fear. 
and they're going to do all, all do of whatever. the above, right? Mm -hmm. And so we don't want, I had to recognize as God began to deal with me. And I can tell you moving forward to answer some of those questions. Yeah, I was number two a lot. But I moved to number one because I recognize, like, this is not the woman I want to be in my marriage. I don't right. want when, you know, I'm trying to put things out there to control how he's going to handle things. No, we want to operate in integrity. And there's no little lie. <laughs> don't know where the word say little lie. <laughs> there's no such thing. It's man you're just manipulative. That's right. what we're going to call you. liar. Right. Okay? Right. That's what we're going to say. There ain't no little. Yeah. And so I had to really repent of that. And I think I even shared on one of our episodes, just, again, being honest. And if I be very honest with you, I am so the opposite. I am a heart person. I mean, so let's just say I am a heart person. Right. I'm sharing this out of ignorance. You know, I didn't recognize until the Lord began to reveal, like, you're being manipulative. And I think I shared on one of our uh, episodes, my mother-in-law, I would call her like a couple days before, but I, there was an intent out of it. I need her to keep my kids. Right. So she has we need that two days night. before. Yeah. So we, two yeah. days before. The reality is, number one, I don't even have to do that with her. But the Lord began to show me, as this definition said, an action that was consistent, but it was manipulative. Yeah. And he said, when have you called during this time for this? Don't do that. Right. That thing bothered me so bad. I remember saying something to my husband. I called her and apologized. Because, again, you want to make sure the heart is right. right. The intention mm -hmm. is right. Mm -hmm. When there's un under hidden things. No, other agendas like that. yeah. that's being manipulative and you want to own it, repent of it and say, God, let me get this right. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. That's so good. And I hope that, you know, I hope that as you're listening and that as you're watching that you're trying to think back on some of those things, because even when she was talking about, you know, the fear of the kids. You know, and some of us might be like, because we know, you know, when we were growing up back in the day, you know, our mamas, <laughs> we were scared to do stuff. <laughs> yeah, we were scared. We were like, we were scared, right? But the thing is, you don't, you don't, just like, and I thought about when she was talking, I thought about our relationship with the Heavenly Father, right? He doesn't want us to be afraid of him. So when it right. talks about fear of the Lord in the, in the scriptures, right. it's not talking about us Ooh. being, yeah, it's not yeah. talking about us being mm -hmm. scared of him because he's going to bring down a wrath on us. No, it's not talking about that because everything he does is in love. And yes, yeah. he chastises us. But what does the scripture say? He chastises those that he loves because he wants us to turn to him. Right. And so why would he want to instill fear? Fear in us and then tell us to turn to him right? right like that doesn't even sound right so why would we want our kids you know everything we love them so we right. want them to have a reverential fear for us right so that respect, if, yeah. if respect yeah so that when they think that they might want to do something that's totally contrary that it'll come up in their heads and say but my mom would not appreciate this so so that's the kind of fear that we want it's not cool you know that's no badge of honor to walk mm -hmm. around and my kid they scared of me because they know you know and i kid because when i talk about christian and i talk about how to he got a crazy mama because you don't want me to show up at that school because you've been acting raggedy and i got to leave my job and come to school because you don't know how to act in these people for school like you i'm a crazy mom you you know and i say that jokingly but at the same time, my, my, my kid isn't scared of me. He, he, he respects me because I love on him and I teach him in such a way where it's like I don't want to um, displease my, mo my mom. I don't want to disappoint her. It's that type of, mm -hmm. of reverence that you want from your kids. You know, you don't want them to be so afraid of you because what's going to happen is when things start to happen in their life that they really need to come to you for, they're not going to come yeah. because they're going to be scared of your response. Yeah. Right. And so that's what we don't want. And I can honestly say today, you know, there was a time when, you know, Christian might say something to me and I'll start reacting. But I but even the Holy Spirit taught me with that, like, don't react that way, because. Um, if you want him, you want to build that relationship and you want him to come and talk to you about the things that are really important, then don't, 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 don't allow it to be where he feels scared because you're going to flip off the handle and right. go off and do all of these things. Right. 
if our he heavenly father doesn't deal with us in that That's way right. then we don't deal with our the people mm -hmm. that he gave us that way right That's right and so i want to i want to switch it a little bit because we talk more about the kids but i want to talk about our husbands i want to talk about that manipulation as it comes to our husbands because i hear a lot of stuff in the streets about what the wives do the streets be talking the, the streets be talking about you know husbands and i i want to i'm going to go to the scripture because i want you to understand how much god hates manipulation so everybody knows the uh story of king saul and if you don't then you're gonna have to go and read um in first samuel um and i'm going to give you a scripture from that but it's somewhere around you know the, the scripture that I'm going to talk about is going to be 1 Samuel 15 and 23. And I'll hit that in a minute. But right around 13, 14, 15, if you want to read about how um, the prophet Samuel anointed King Saul and how all of that came to be. Because I don't want to go into all of that. But he, King Saul ended up being um, the king over Israel. And... Just to get right to the point, um, this was before King Saul. He had already been anointed, and he was getting he was about to go into battle. And the prophet Samuel gave him clear instructions. Okay, he said, "Wait for me for seven days, and at that time I'll come and I'll offer the burnt sacrifices." Now. Mm -hmm. During that time, if you know about the scriptures, during that time, only the priests could offer burnt sacrifices. So it wasn't up to the kings and all these other people, you know, which is why Samuel um, said to him, you wait for me. Right. You know, and I think it was a dual purpose in that, which we were talking about that earlier. But you wait, you know, and when when Samuel talked to Saul, that was he was God's mouthpiece. So that was like the Lord talking to Saul right through Samuel. So he said, you wait for me for seven days. So seven days had come. King Saul saw that his entire army, they started scattering. People were scared. And even he was scared. He, he saw he, he saw the uh, enemy setting up to get ready to um, come and bombard him. And, and, and he just thought that they were going to be, you know, wiped. wiped out. Right. And so because of what he saw, because of what he focused on, he disregarded the word that was given to, yeah. to him yeah. from the mouth of God yep. through Samuel. He disregarded the Lord. He, so what did he do? He offered the burnt offerings for himself, right? He had the, he asked, as a matter of fact, he had other people to engage in this foolery. He went and asked the people, okay, bring me the stuff so that I can go ahead and offer this burnt sacrifice. So he done brought people in. On his disobedience. On his disobedience. <laughs> really? Really? Right? So he he tragically disobeyed the laws. And God was not happy. So, of course, when Samuel came, he said, what have you done? What have you done? So he was, so um, Saul was like, well, I saw that the people were scattering, that my, my soldiers were scattering. I saw that. You know, he just began to, to focus on what he saw. And because of what he saw, he chose to disobey the, the laws of Moses and, he, and the direct voice of God. And so this is what um, God told him. And this is in 1 Samuel 15 and 23. And this is the Amplified Version. It says, for rebellion, because anytime you disobey the word of the Lord. Anytime you disobey what God has said, I don't care how small it is, how big it is, it is rebellion because that's to go against what you know is right. Yeah. So anytime, so that's rebellion, okay? Re yeah. For rebellion is as serious as the sin of divination. So what is divination? That's fortune telling. That's witchcraft. Yeah. That's reading the cards. That's all that astrology and all that stuff that people get into. Yeah. Go, don't do that. Because you're opening up a whole different world that you don't want to expose yourself to. So, it says, for, for rebellion is as serious as the sin of divina, divina, divination, sorry, fortune telling. And disobedience is as serious as false religion and idolatry. And we already know 
how God feels about idolatry. He said, "Don't you don't put any other gods before me because I'm a mm -hmm. jealous God. That's over in Exodus. Yeah. And then he told him, he said, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, mm. he has also rejected you as king. Wow. I don't ever want the Lord to reject me for nothing. Okay, nothing. because because when he does that, yeah. that means that he has pretty much released you to do whatever it is that you think you big enough and big enough and bad to do against what he has already told you to do. That's a bad place. That's a bad place to be. So when we think about the priest of our home. Yeah. When you I when you were talking, I thought about even when you were kind of outlining um Saul um and you gave a couple of key things and one of them was you said this he actually went into a lane that was not created for him that's right when uh samuel was talking to him he was the mouth of god and so when he said wait this was not even something was an option because this was not a role he was created to function in correct and so when saul goes into this as you already beautifully told us he went into a lane that you were not supposed to be in. And I thought about, right, first the spiritual, then the natural. And I thought about, think about our husbands who are based on the word of God, priest. They are in a role to handle certain things, not because they are better, we are lesser. Right. We are on the same, mm -hmm. um, if I could say, same level. level. Mm -hmm. um, but the roles are different and the impacts are different Correct. right and so when we look at that and how you was just given that that background i thought about how many times do we from our role see just like saul was seeing things we don't agree or maybe we see something financially that is bringing us a little heartburn and we don't agree with a decision they made or we're getting anxious and we have heartburn or or we're waiting for a response and haven't gotten a response right and that does something to us. And so what do we do? Though we hear this story and go, oh, no, he didn't. But we do that. We go and, oh, I'm going to just do this my way. Oh, I'm a, ain't, ain't no big deal. I'm going to just read. And we usurp their authority. Or we decide, well, you're not moving fast enough. You don't obviously see whatever. I'll just do it. Mm -hmm. And so we get in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Then after about two or three weeks in that mug, we may it. When are you going to rise up and be the man that got <laughs> told him to be? Well, yes. you sat in the seat. You know what I'm saying? And so now you mad. You got an attitude because you're in a role that was never outlined for you. That's right. You're doing it mad. You're doing it angry. You're mm -hmm. looking at them sideways. you setting that atmosphere in your home in all kind of bitterness and anger. Because at the bottom line, with you in the seat, they can't even take the seat. Mm -hmm. So until you acknowledge and you move, because it's not just them, no. And Celeste asked the question, what do we do? Well, it's not for you to jump in the lane. Sometimes we really have to learn as wives to wait it out. And that is one of the hardest things for us because we yeah. feel like we're going to lose. And I'm talking from what I know. Yeah. We feel like we're going to lose. Well, what if, it, if this doesn't make it? Da, 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 da. But we have to remember that there is one that sits high. And looks low. And looks low. Yeah. He does not slumber or sleep. He we're never, and I and I say this in with the right attitude, but we're never at the mercies of our husbands. God moves. And what about if your husband is not saved? There's still a way because we must remember that we our influence can win them over. Yes. That's what the scripture our says. Our influence can win them over. Mm -hmm. And as a scripture, I actually found it for this practical example. I was telling Celeste, I said, Oh my God, I got accept. So I went and looked for it. And here's what the, the scriptures say, because I know for some of you, it's like, yeah, that's what y'all say. Y'all got these, y'all heard, at least they say, at least, oh, okay, hold on, for you. <laughs> let, <laughs> let the word of the Lord speak. <laughs> and so here is what it reminds us. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Okay, First Peter, and this is what it says in verses 2 and 3. And I want to read it. I think I want to read it in, hold on, that ain't, it's First Peter. I want to read it in Amplified. Y'all know because I'm Amplified. Hold on. <laughs> all things. All things Amplified. Okay. Note that ain't easy too. First Peter 2. 
two through three. Was it one? Hold on. I lost she my scripture. Looking. I know. She's looking. She had it up. I sure did. I'm going to just go back to my internet. Okay, here we go. First, oh, three. All right, I was in the wrong one. Three, one through two. So here's what it says in First Peter 3. And I'll actually read it first in New King James Version. It says, wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives mm -hmm. when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Now, I want to read it in, I'm going to actually read it next. In the same way, wives, this is first verse, be subject to your own husbands. Then, even if some are disobedient to the word, they will be won over without a word by the way you live. When they see your pure and reverent conduct, so let's just talk about that reverence, which is just respect, they, you will win them over. That's influence. 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 So it doesn't matter. You say, I don't have a hunt. We cannot take it upon ourselves to just say what they're not doing. Our influence must be to still obey God. If this is what he has called them to do. And, and mind you, we're saying that in whatever it looks like. We talked about, I think it was almost a first or two episodes you have a seat at the table yeah. every family and marriage looks different we're not always i mean in my home i barely cook so if you try to judge the bartleys on them old school days i'm gonna put my hand up and say <laughs> stay over there because <laughs> i'm not the one with the pots and the, i barely cook my husband loves to cook but i i handle most of the money he is very involved. We do budget meetings, but he's like, you're good with that. Tell me what. So we, we're not in here to get into roles and responsibility. That's not what it's about. Whatever you decide in your household, there must be a respect for the role that God has set up. Right. Who wash your dishes, who fold, who the, ain't got nothing to do with us. We talking right. about the word of God. And the, the word of God has set them in a place that we must reverence them. And when we choose to say, well, I mean, and he don't look that qualified to me. And I'm the one with the masters and he need, I'm going to just make this decision because mm -hmm. he didn't go to college. I'm the one with the degree. I'm the one that, okay. Don't do that. And you minimize who God has set him to be. Yeah. Because God is using him. And your degree does not mean you can be a degree fool. Yes. There are but a lot of those. he may not know as much and have all the degree background, but he's seeking God and God is guiding his hands. But you didn't wait, Saul. Right. You didn't wait. You didn't know that he had been petitioning God. You didn't know that he had an idea to bring to the table. And you just put yourself there. You just made the decision for your child. Go ahead. Go, we gonna sign you up. And then when your daddy asks, well, we gonna say manipulation. Yeah, yeah. Because you're teaching your child. Not only can you go behind your father or behind your mother's back. You do you know how much seed of discord you're sowing? Yes, and in you that might, moment, and, you, and they might not even see it. You know, because you're doing it. You're doing all of this in the spirit. Like that's that's what's going on. So then when you start to see, so as your kid grows up and you start to see certain things manifest from them, you know, these these little subtle levels of disrespect and not honoring even what your husband has said. And then, or now you and the parents have set rules and you notice that your child go to a teacher or someone and they, and you like, no, they didn't go. And then they going against, right. okay, but you taught them that. You taught them, you grade teaching four. them that. Yeah. It's all, all of those things matter. All of those things matter. So you have to be very, very careful with how you regard him, him being your husband. Right. And I, I tell Christian all the time, listen, man, your dad on the same team, bro. Like you right, can't. That part. <laughs> Like you cannot, and your kids do not come before your husband. No, they do not. So no. you can't be around here cahooting with your kids and pitting them against your friend. You 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 can't do that because no. you're raising a monster. And then because remember, especially your boys in the home when they grow up and start having their um, and get married and stuff, you're going to see the same type of behavior if you don't deal with that. You know, if yes. you don't if you don't deal with that. And wives, we can influence that. Right, because again, I tell my son, like he, that's your dad. I, you know, I, the the decision may be different than what we thought it should look like, yeah. but at the end of the day, that is your dad, and he knows what's best for you. You know, and if not, if we feel a certain kind of way, guess what we can do? We can go and pray, 
That is not a cop out. That is re it's really not. We can go and say, okay, God, I, I really, I'm seeing something totally different, Lord. Yeah. And so I'm just bringing this to you and I'm just asking you to direct my husband, give him wisdom in this particular thing. Right. Um, I, I see that it looks like it might be going left. God, if it is, I trust you and yeah. I know that you will because I because I'm submitting to him. He's the priest in his yeah. home and I'm submitting to him. So, Lord, I am coming to you yeah. and I am asking you that if this if this door is not the right door that we should walk through, if this is not the right decision, slam the door shut. And God hears our can we just say for a minute Shh. the most influence you can have. And I was just talking about this to somebody else. As a woman, not just as a wife, like as a woman, woman, is prayer. For some reason, even if you, if you hear someone, and don't get me wrong, I get it that it's a cliche, but when you tell somebody, what well, did, you, did you pray about it? We almost like, no, really. You can shift atmospheres. You can change. When you understand the power of prayer yes. and the authority of God's word, and you're praying his word to say, based on the authority of your word, that you said that if I believe without doubting that this mountain, I can, whatever the word of God is saying, when you begin to pray, things change. And this is the most influence that you can have yeah. as a wife and as a yeah. woman than yeah. operating. And like Celeste said, being manipulative. And I just thought about, I thought, but this is real, like, I ain't going to go all into it because he might be like, all my business in the streets. Don't, don't no, us, nothing bad. But I thought about, and my sister know about this. Because here's another perspective. Though we're talking about manipulative, some things is good stuff. And here's the thing. We talk about this all the time. The reality is we're different. Women are different. Men are different. What they said, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. It is true. Yeah, okay? Yeah, Wherever yeah. Venus got going yeah. on, we different. Okay? But the reality is sometimes we know our, we just talked about this, we know our husbands. We done live with these men forever and a day. We know them. They don't think we know them. I don't know. We know them. And so sometimes the things that you have to do and go through, you like, why I got to do you? But it's just some of it is their manhood. Some of it is that, yeah. you know, just it takes, they, they move different. Let's put it that way. And so I had a situation where, and if I be honest, this was revealed to me almost seven years ago. I kid you not, seven years ago, I remember praying about this and I felt like this particular situation would be good for Ja. Um, but it didn't come to then when it came up. This time it was still kind of like, mm-mm, nothing. Um, and the old me would have debated him. I would have, listen, I would have came with, I come ready, okay? If you would look at the reports, the static son, look, that, that's how I mean. <laughs> Y'all pray for my husband. Back in the day, I was something else. I would have had my stuff ready. When you look at this, have you done this research? Because that, I'm going to prove to you. Ain't going to get nowhere. All I'm doing is anchoring him more down because I'm coming at him. Yeah. And I'm not respecting his no, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if I know this is really good for him, it's not even to make him, again, that manipulation is not to make him see it my way. Right. If this is really good for him, then who knows him better than me? I can say God. And so this Lord. time as it comes around, it was kind of a little bit of the same attitude. Mm -mm. And what I called, I said, I ain't say nothing. I said, I'm, going, I'm taking this to prayer. I told her, I told some members on prayer, I said, this is what my prayer is. And you know what? My attitude in prayer was still not, Lord, change his mind so he see I'm right. Mm -hmm. I said, God, this is what I believe. But you know him best, and I want what's best for him. Mm -hmm. If this was best for him, shut every door before and open only the ones. Mm -hmm. And to make the long story short, his whole attitude changed. But you whole know what? Attitude. Whole attitude. It was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> I had nothing to do. I didn't yeah. push at him. If anything, I wanted him to know, I'm Team Javier. Yes. Whatever decision you make, I'm going to rock with you. Was I, did I mean that 100? Yes. Was I nervous because I really felt I did, but it wasn't about control for me. Like in other seasons, I don't want somebody making decisions out of control. Right. I have to learn. He's a whole human. And even with me knowing that I could be right, he could still make the decision. Yeah, that no. And right. you got to be okay with that. Yeah. But God, yeah. I choose to do, I chose to do my hardest work 
on my knees and not push him, not try to throw stuff up in his face, not trying to, you know, well, I, from what I heard, and if you would just let, no, I didn't want to do that. I just began to pray and say, God, if there's anything in his heart, if there's an experience, you open up his eyes. But uh, even, I, and I remember telling the Lord, I said, I don't even want to pray my will. Let yeah, thine will, will be pray. done. Thine will be done. Yeah. And it turns, so we're saying this yeah. because... It's not even just in a bad. We may see really good things that we know, like no, they will be good for. And you whatever, can't even yeah. understand mm -hmm. why they won't. Yeah, you can't yeah. manipulate. Yeah, you can't control. You influence through prayer. Hedge them in. Yeah. So let's literally outline the when she was talking how we can control in prayer. Hedge them, mm -hmm. cover them. Yeah, and see, here's the thing, because sometimes. We maybe we don't go to God because we don't think He's listening, or because we really don't think He hears, and because we really do think it's a cop out. Mm -hmm. But when you really Whew. begin to, when you really begin to know that God is for you, and that He hears every, every yes. word that you utter to Him. Yeah, you know that scripture that talks about He sits high, He looks low, He doesn't sleep or slumber. Like that is for real. Yeah, I rem I recently went on a three day fast because there was some, this, just some things I needed to know from my husband. And I'm not going to go into detail because we were wrapping up. But I would let me tell you this: if God hadn't, and He already had before, because mm -hmm. I I remember from whence I came, and I know that He's heard my prayers just over the years. But when I tell you God met me the day after I finished the the fast and basically just said I hear you mm -hmm. and this is and because and and so when when my husband and I had that conversation and I just remember sharing with my husband I said this very conversation is as a result of me fasting and praying because I really needed to know the things that you're telling me now the things that you're revealing these were things that I just really needed to know and this is an indication that God heard me because he didn't know that I was, I didn't go and say, I'm about to go fast on you because mm -hmm. you just, <laughs> no. Your influence. Yeah. She didn't I, tell him. She I just, didn't tell him. I just did it and it was out of a pure heart because I just really needed to know some things. And he began to open up and I just said, God, thank you. Like he, he reminded me that daughter, I hear you and I'm concerned about everything that concerns everything. you and you can trust me yeah you can bring it to me i didn't bring it to all these different people i didn't mm -hmm. go talk to all these people first i didn't mm -hmm. i don't even think she knew i was on the fast until after mm -hmm. i told her afterwards mm -hmm. because my motive was god i'm t i'm bringing this to you because i read now she knew mm -hmm. the things some of the things that i had been fasting about mm -hmm. because there are just things that we share but she didn't know like when I did it. As, but she did. She was one of the cha she was one of my cheerleaders to say Celeste fast fast because she yeah. I do remember we had the conversation, but she didn't know when exactly when. I did mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and, and it was so, like that. And, and he and he answered, and he did it suddenly, right? And and maybe sometimes it's not always suddenly. And like in the story that you heard of us talking about with um, Saul, where you know. It was seven days, or maybe it was seven weeks, or maybe it was seven months, whatever it is. If God said that he going to take care of it, wait. 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 Don't, don't take it up on yourself. God mm -hmm. hears. He knows. He sees. He sees your tears. Yeah. He sees your heart. Yeah. Like, he just, he knows all things. And if yeah. you can just choose, because it's a choice, if you could just choose to trust him and choose to wait on him and choose to take it to him, He'll, 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 he will blow your mind. He'll, he'll do whatever it is that you need for him to do. He'll answer. He'll, and even if he don't answer, um, even if he don't, if the answer doesn't look exactly how you need it to look, mm -hmm. whatever his answer w is going to be. And when he does answer, you, st you're still going to have so much peace because it's going to be what he did and how he did it. And in his time, but you got to rest in that. You got the rest in that so and as we get ready to end we're gonna get ready to end but i want to end with this practical example because celeste touched on something that's really key and we want to end with this when we're talking about influence you know she was just talking about how she fasted and here's the reality if we go back to how we started 
we talked about the influence it can it can affect the character um the actions the mm -hmm. outcome it has impact mm -hmm. will your impact be for good or bad but here's the thing though we want to have these great impacts it requires sacrifice to be influential in the right way, honestly, is not so much about what you do on the outside as the end. Yeah. It's your inward work with Christ right. that brings about that influence. And so I share this example for someone who maybe you're in a rough patch in your marriage. Because if I be very honest, this was a very rough season in my marriage. Um, and, and my husband is okay with me sharing this, but I remember this was in a rough patch in our season, but I was doing a lot of fasting and praying. He didn't even know it. Like Celeste said, she knew it. My godmother knew it. My mother knew it. That was about it. I was just sent out like, y'all pray, keep me covered going <laughs> fasting again. I never told him like I'm fasting for you. Um, but it, during that fast, and I'm sharing this for several reasons. One, for you to know that when you are is not even about trying to be anything, it's being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because a lot of times I wasn't trying to be anything. I just wanted my marriage. I wanted things, some things to be changed in me and him, whatever, yeah, yeah. right? And so, but the things that God shows you to do will require a sacrifice from you. Mm -hmm. Just like she fasted. Though she wanted, it wasn't for her to use her mouth, it was fasted. And through that season, to make a long story short, I remember I, I could tell you exactly where I was. I was at this time working in corporate. We had like a all day conference. I'm in the conference. I kid you not. People are talking, and just as clear as I'm talking to you, I heard throw Javier Kingdom Man party. So I'm like, well, what's a Kingdom Man party? <laughs> a lot of people ask that. So I could hear this, and I remember started writing. I'm talking about like this, all the details. Like only these people would speak, invite these people, have this person cater it. It was so clear. And it was like, and God began to tell me, some reveal some other things. So I'm like, okay. But if I be a little honest with you, I'm a little salty, okay? Let's just be yeah, real. I was about to say, don't forget to tell that part. Because ain't nothing about right now great. <laughs> He was not being kingdom managed to <laughs> see him a party, you know. Yeah. And I remember just feeling like kind of crying yeah. because I feel like oh, I do, I give, you know, and not making it like he was this huge problem, but no. we just wasn't in a great place. Either right. person, right? Both of us. It wasn't just all him. But God is saying, throw him this kingdom man party. So I'm like, and I had details. So I remember going out the room, I had to get myself together because I was a little emotional because I felt like you're asking for more than I can give, you know, right now. But I did. I called the people, get all the things together. And I remember even when I was talking, <laughs> so let's be like, what's a kingdom man? <laughs> like, I don't know. Just, just either you come in or what you going to do. I'm just following. It didn't all make sense to me. Hear me. So I'm coordinating this. People are asking and I'm, now let's be clear the terminology was not obsolete to me because Pastor Tony Evans um, found it kind of kingdom man like kingdom woman. Right, and right. it's basically everything becoming the man and the woman from a biblical per per perspective. perspective. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like this just dropped out and I never heard of it, but I had never heard of a kingdom man party. So, make a long story short, I coordinated, get caterer, send out invitation. I mean, y'all, this is like a surprise. Custom invitations, big everything big. is a big thing. Mm -hmm. All these people in the room, I have no idea. And the closer it is, I'm getting nervous, right, because it's a surprise. But I'm also feeling some kind of way because I don't feel like, if I be honest, he's deserving of it. <laughs> it's like, right. you want me to celebrate him for what right now? What about my love cup? <laughs> that needs to be fountain. <laughs> that needs cup. to be, you know. And so we do it, and people came in, they brought gifts, but there was a spot that I remember specifically, the Lord said, I want three people to speak to him. It was a particular minister and the mothers, his mother, my mother. Those were the only people that he, he allowed to minister, if I could say it that way that day. And he said, and you're going to say something, and you're going to then open it up for people to just fill them up. So I'm like, okay. And what I will tell you, is it ended up being a great day. He was shocked beyond words, okay? He cried a lot. Um, and I remember just the message that came through. It was from God. Here's the thing. I shared with Celeste, okay? Went great. Lord, don't understand. Would love to tell you after that, everything the next day changed. It did not. Right. It was a work in progress. Right. But I remember about a year later, 
Um, we're in a better place. We're sharing. And he said to me one day, I don't even know how we got back on it. And he said, that kingdom party was one of the hardest things in my life to sit through. And I was like, what? He just really began to express his feelings. And he said, to hear the love that was not just from the people, but I heard God of who I was, but I knew I wasn't. Mm -hmm. He said, it was like them calling me to be something that I knew that I wasn't there. He said it was unbearable to sit. He said, mm -hmm. I cried a lot. But then he said, yet I felt God's love. Like I felt people love. How he expressed it almost a year to 18 months later, I was like, so why am I saying that? Influence. I could have easily been like, ain't nobody spending all this money getting the caterer doing it for he ain't even sure. I don't even feel love. I don't, we ain't talk. Yeah. Sometimes when we're wanting this this change in our marriage, it will start with things that will not make sense. Hear me. That didn't make sense. I remember people even saying, well, what am I bringing? I'm like, I don't know. Just bring some money, a gift card. I, I don't know. It's not about that. Because I'm, right. I'm still trying to figure. I'm just piecing it as I hear God. But I yeah. heard God. I'm talking about to the point we even had a custom, like, emblem made. Like, the lion of Ju Like, we had this lion with his initials. Like, I heard specific things from God. This was not just no balloons and some things. We had an emblem. We had custom things. We put the lion on there. And... He was just like, and looking back, I get emotional. And I was sharing this with Celeste not too long ago. I said, looking back, all I begin to think about is, man, the lengths that God will go through yeah. to win his own. Yeah. I didn't know he was using me. In yeah. my mind, I'm thinking, but until he began to share, all he saw was God's love, but yet his chastening, but yet his love. Right. Because he said, as people speak, he was just like, this is unbearable. To hear this person that they're that I feel like I'm not right now, but then yet it made him want to be better. Yeah. And so God was like, mm -hmm. I tell you what, I set up a party to honor someone that doesn't deserve honor, and he gonna know it. Yeah. You ain't gonna know it, but he gonna know it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what that was gonna sit like for him. So hear what we're saying. For her, she went on three days. She didn't know. We could have responded in our emotions. Yeah, we could have that. responded in things. But a lot of times when you want to make an impact, it's not so much about what you do, as Celeste said, as just obeying. Obeying. Yeah. Hearing, listening, and obeying God. Yeah. Not moving ahead of him. Not moving. Delayed disobedience. And still, just obey. Yeah. If yeah. he said it. Then you wait on it. Okay, yes. but it's month three. But you said he said it, right? Okay. Wait. 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 And, and, and he'll 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 help you wait. That's that's the, another function of the Holy Spirit. He will help you wait. Yeah. You know, he won't cause cause what what he has on the other side at other side of that is far better than anything you can far ever better. conjure up in your mind. Yes. Okay. So Listen, I hope that you were was able to take something back. You know, I want to just offer a small prayer um, right now at the end because <laughs> this is foolishness right here. <laughs> because you know what? Like. We we want to we want you to be the influence that God has created you to be. Yeah. Not manipulation, not, you know, out of some you know, evil intent or some, you know, motive that you got hidden that nobody can see. Because guess what? Nobody can see what's in there but the Lord. And really, that's all who that's matters, all that matters at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So I just want to offer a small prayer and then we're going to, you know, see you next week. All right? Because football on. Yeah. And I need to go get ready for my Florida State and Chia Gator. So we get ready. Hey, this way, y'all see the separation? <laughs> this way, it's going to be a big old gap. Oh. God, so listen. I'm gonna be like a, this while she pray. Just a short, <laughs> just a short prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we yes. thank you. We thank you for this time to minister to whoever yes, okay. um, chose to listen to us, oh God. And we realize, oh God, that this is not about us, Lord, but yes. it is so about you, and thank it's you, so Jesus. about just pointing people to you and just really testifying and just yes, letting them know of your goodness your grace your mercy and the fact that you love us so 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 much and you're concerned yes, about everything that concerns us god so 
Right now, we just give you our hearts. We Thank lay you, our hearts at yes. your feet, God. We want to be who you've created us to be. We yes. want to be influencers in our homes, but we want to be good influencers in our homes, Lord. We want to influence our husband. We want to influence our kids. We want to leave an impact, God, that if something should happen to us, they'll be able yeah. to say, oh, God, they'll be able to rise up <laughs> and call us blessed because yes. of what we did yes, and how God. we honored you first. Um, in our lives and in our decisions, oh God, give us wisdom. You told us in your word, oh God, that if we need wisdom, all we have to do is ask for it and you would give it to us um, willingly and you won't hold any back, oh God. So give us wisdom as to how to be the godly influencers that you have called us to be, God. And we will so forever give you praise and god one more thing if, if there is anything that's yes, in us god. oh god that's not like you lord yeah. please purge us oh god yes, purge yes, us yes, but yes. don't ever take your spirit away from us because your Thank spirit you, is what's going to keep us and your grace is what's going to continue to cover us and empower us oh god to do what you called us to do for such a time as this yes, god. god so we just thank you we praise you, we glorify you, and we magnify you. We pray for every single woman, oh God, that's listening yeah. right, God, right now, God. Encourage her. Build her up, oh God. Even reveal to her those things that are, may not be like you, oh God. And let her know, oh God, that it's okay to lay them at your feet because you're not here to yeah. condemn her, oh God. But you want her, oh God. You want her. You want to love on her, oh God. And you want her to be all that you call her to be yes. um, during this time, oh God. So we just thank you now and we praise you, oh God. And until next week, oh God, we're just going to continue to go forth and do what you called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, we'll see you. We will see you next week. Next week. <laughs> All right. Don't y'all be out there manipulating that. <laughs> we done told y'all. And, and we done prayed right. over you too. Okay? And we done prayed over you. All, All right. right. Go Gators. All right. Bye. Bye.